Let's go on discussion of what's called Chapter 8, or your Topic 8, in your PowerPoints. It actually covers Chapter 9 in your Service Safe course book, which is the flow of food, looking at food service a little bit. Uh, so this will be another short chapter and dealing with uh, what you got to do in certain situations for restaurants. Again, a pretty short chapter. A couple of things you're going to look at in this thing is kind of general rules for holding food, uh, whether it's hot food, cold food, holding food without a temperature control, uh, serving for food safety, uh, servers, kind of how you divide up labor, uh, some tips for reserving service areas. Uh, off-site services and catering. So a lot of ton of stuff to record, but basically, how do you hold food temperatures without a control if you're looking at cold food? Cold food can be held, as you can see there, without temperature control for up to six hours if, first, it was at 41 degrees or lower before removing it from the refrigerator. Second, if it does not get over 70 degrees. And to uh, third thing, if it has a label that specifies the time it was removed from the refrigeration and the time it must be thrown out. So it has a total of six hours. You put it out at noon, okay? And it says it came out of the refrigerator at 41 degrees at noon. You know, as long as you have it back in before six o'clock, excuse me, before seven o'clock, then it was fine. If it's sold, served, thrown out, it's got to be within those six hours. After that, it definitely has to be thrown out. Okay, so this is for cold food. Next slide will cover warm food. On the cut, the opposite end of that, we saw that cold food can be handled for up to six hours as long as it has a label, and you can see clearly the label on this thing. When you go into hot food, uh, it can be held without temperature control for up to four hours if first it was held at 135 or higher before removing it from the oven, the stovetop, the fryer, whatever it was. If it has a label specifying when it must be thrown out, again, if it was noon after four o'clock, it's got to be thrown out. Okay. If it's sold, served, or thrown out, basically after or within those four hours, it's fine. If it goes over those four hours, then it definitely has to be discarded. I've always been asked, how do you know what things you can reserve? Typically, from what I've been told, it is one time after you, you heat something up the first time, uh, you don't use it all, you cool it down properly in the refrigerator, reheat it again to a proper temperature. And you can use it one more time. But there are certain things you never want to reserve or reuse. Uh, food returned by one customer to another customer. No, never. Any type of plate garnishes, uncovered condiments, uh, if it's in like a bowl or something, bread or rolls, you know, once they go to a restaurant and you don't consume them, they can't use them again. So, um, I know typically people, for example, off the top of my head, they're on Atkins diet. And then they have rolls brought to their table. Once they're brought to the table, they cannot reuse them, so make sure that you would uh, know about that, or uh, if you're a customer, tell people about that. Um, but in general, if you have unopened prepackaged foods, can be reserved, like uh, condiment packets, um, mustard, mayonnaise, ketchup, uh, crackers, and breadsticks. You can see that those things that have a package that uh, has some integrity to them can be reused. So what if you're doing some type of a catering off of your site? A couple of things to consider. Uh, first, use insulated food grade containers that can maintain the right temperature. As you see, they have roast beef and chicken in this uh, portable carrier over here. They uh, do have covers on them. They are labeled. Uh, make sure the insides of the vehicles are cleaned regularly. Check the internal temperature of the food. Once it arrives, make sure it's still at appropriate temperature. And it's probably hard to even see on there that but there's probably not only a label on there but a, a use by date and a time and reheating and service instructions so let's say these uh this roast beef and chicken came out of the oven at 11 o'clock we know we've got four hours to be able to use them by something there's also to think about is what kind of options do you have available at this service site now make sure it has the right utilities if you need water if you have to cook wash dishes or hand wash and make sure it has the proper place for it what type of garbage containers are there for food prep, storage, or service areas? Also, make sure we keep things separate if we have meat, seafood, or poultry and you're ready to eat items if you're going to cook on location. Make sure those things are kept separate as well. So, making sure the off site place does have the right capabilities. One area that's kind of overlooked is when you have 
potentially hazardous foods or temperature control for safety foods in a vending machine. Uh, make sure you can see the shelf life is on these. You can see on these turkey and cheese sandwich, 330 is the date. And they also need to be kept at the right temperature as well, below 41 degrees in this case for the sandwich. Uh, make sure it does stay in its original container until it is consumed by the uh, individual. Uh, if you have fresh fruit, make sure it's washed and wrapped with an edible peel before putting it in the machine. Or, as a consumer, make sure these things are appropriate before you buy them and look them through the glass. Making sure they have the right dates, making sure uh, that everything is proper on the right type of packaging before you purchase something like that. This concludes this topic. Make sure you do your quiz real quick. Email it or bring it into the instructor. Review your book. Go through chapter 9, the flow of food for service. And next we'll move on to topic 9, which should cover chapter 10, I do believe.